Hi everyone, quite an interesting today in the stock market. I tell you what, I've always said that if, the, if there's nothing more bullish than a reversal, it's a re-reversal, and then uh, the only thing more reversal can be a re-re-reversal, and we almost had that today at one point as we managed to intraday trade above the high of the day at one point on the NASDAQ, so that was actually quite impressive. <coughs> Excuse me everybody, I have a cold. But unfortunately, we couldn't hold those gains, and we came all the way back. And we did manage to close higher than where we gap up open, so that's good. But overall, <laughs> a lot is still left to the imagination. We remain under a neutral signal across the board. However, on the NYSE, we remain under a sell condition. But you can see the reversals in every single index as I throw them all up. The only good news is, is that we finished higher than where we closed on every single index even the Russell 2000, barely. So we're still under neutral condition. And now let's go ahead and look at the oscillators. You can, I know, let me get rid of this volume thing right here. Let me get, delete. So you can see on the Russell 2000, you can see the MACD still turned and going down low. TSV is slightly turned up today, but still no higher highs, higher lows. It's still lower highs, lower lows. So no way to get bullish there. And then if you look at stochastics, we've now hit that zero number, which is great considering that we're holding up. So we're working off the overbought conditions well, but our oscillators aren't rolling higher, so there's no reason to get extremely bullish and try to call a bottom here. Looking at the S&P 500, you can see the same thing. The oscillator has worked off those overbought conditions quite nicely. New York Stock Exchange is below the zero line, and the Dow Jones Industrial Average is coming up on that zero line, so everything looks good. Now looking at the oscillators, same thing. MACD, TSV, they're all still pointing decisively down. There is no turn up in any of these. Whoops, sorry, I already did that one. In any of these indicators, here's the NASDAQ, still a clear downtrend for all the oscillators, but they're working off that condition nicely, holding up relatively well. And the good news is, is that today we only had a couple of partial sell signals. DXCM is really a half-assed one. You don't have to take it. I am because it's above average volume, especially on the two days. Since the stock is reversing this strong quasi follow-through breakout move on the 9th, on the 10th it reversed it but didn't quite destroy it completely yet because it didn't close below 55.47. It did do that today and on top of that closed below the 10-day moving average, the white line as you can see here. So that's a 20% sell. Pay C, unfortunately, closed below the 20-day moving average, and no, it did it on lower volume. You can do one of two things here. You can either sell 25% now and or because it's closed at 25.64, which is above the 25-25 level, you can put sell stops on 25% of the position at 25.24. That way, if PAYC opens tomorrow and then rallies the rest of the day, you won't get shaken out of the position. And if it continues to deteriorate, you'll still get out basically at where we're at right now, 25.64. A few cents less than a dollar isn't going to, you know, be that much. It might cost, what, 10, 20 bucks for me on my position. But overall, everything looks good. If this would have been heavier volume, no matter what had been at the end of the day. But I think that that is what I'm going to personally do is I'm setting a sell stop below 25.00. 25 DXCM 20% of that's just coming off and also PLNR remember I didn't get filled because my limit was at 640 on the day of the big breakout and even though it tells you that it trade down to 640 it didn't hit my limits so I don't have any PLNR but if you do if you happen to get lucky and got filled maybe at 641 we have another 25% sell signal it's still consolidating and it's lower volume so isn't more but the bottom line is it isn't moving higher immediately and we can move on to better options I'm gonna go ahead and show you one stock I'm passing on today H&T is in my pre perfect speculator stack stock scan it gave me a pocket pivot point signal today on higher volume than the day before but it didn't close at the high of the day, which is something I would have needed to see. And BOP did not increase from the previous BOP level. So that is also another issue that I have, and it didn't close above those most recent highs. So H&T is a pass. Just wanted to give it out to everyone in case you want to go ahead and go long early. The two new positions I'm taking is LXFT. There's been a ton of volume recently. I don't know if this is going to end up being churning or if this is a ton of accumulation. When I look at the intraday pattern, do you see all the tails, 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 even a tail here? 
as a heavier volume. That indicates accumulation to me. This is the only day that leaves a lot to my imagination right here. That seems like a churn session. And it could possibly be churning because while we have all these bullish tails, notice that we're closing lower than where we open on all of those days. But a good, it seems to me that we have a good you know, signal here. It's right off the 50-day moving average in a tight consolidation range. On a weekly, you can see it's a very tight pattern. And overall, it looks good. We had an increase in BOP to the green, back to green BOP. So if we're wrong, we risk about 3.5%. Not a big deal. If we're right, if we just get even another measured move from May to this even most recent high, we're looking at a 50% gain. And I tell you what, 50% gain to 3.5% loss. For anybody that can do the math, clearly we're looking at an over 10 to 1 risk reward ratio. I'll take that any day. And then also, Ruby gave me an ad signal. Not great, it's pretty good. Pocket pivot point signal after a low volume base. The base never closed below the 20 day moving average, so I didn't get rid of any of my position ahead of this signal. So RUBI is a 20% signal. If we're wrong, we do risk 5% on the position, but it's only 2% of the capital. It can't be more than 2.5%. You can go ahead and do it up to 2.5%, but I never like to buy more the second time around uh, following my first purchase unless it's a perfect signal after a long base like H-E-E-S was at the beginning of 2013, following its September 2012 signals. However, I did not load up on that position then just because that's coming out of 2012. That was the last of the bad years for me. 2011 and 2012, I'll remind you, were down years for me, down 20% in 2011, which was shocking. Even more shocking was being down 10% for 2012. We've completely rebounded those losses. We've made them all back up in the past two years. So that is the other good news to all of that. But wish I would have learned my lessons earlier with these sell stops. Uh, didn't need them before 2008. Needed them a lot earlier before I started to use them in 2016. Needed to start using them in 2010. What are you going to do? All right, everyone. Have a great Friday. One more thing, just to let you know before I go. Sorry, sorry, sorry. The NASDAQ and everything, while we consolidate here, we've had a few things happen. The VIX is up 50% in three days, not excluding today. Today it's up even more. But before today, it was up 50% in three days, while the SPX, the SP500, was only down 2.37%. That's the lowest down move ever, ever, with the VIX rallying 50%. So a lot of fear even with this little pullback is coming to the market. We had a 90% down day the day before. 90% down days in December normally lead to an excellent end of the year run. Um, historically, if you go look up Jay Lyons Fund Management, I believe the statistics are on his Tumblr page or Twitter account. Also, we're in the second of a four-year and sixth of an eight-year presidential cycle, and we have a Santa Claus rally. Don't fight seasonality.